silver friends this is Jolie from Quicksilver Hair and I'm currently on my back porch and yes that says 100 degrees so yep we're in the heat of summer and I thought this would be a great time to discuss how to protect your silver hair from the Sun so you can see I've got my hat on which is UV protective but uh, since it's 100 degrees out here let's go back inside and have a chat shall we Phew! Only 75 in my office and I will forever be grateful for air conditioning. <laughs> anyway, let's get to it. So many people are very surprised by the fact that you still have to do some things to care for your gray hair and protect it from the environment. Specifically the sun, heat, and environmental pollutants, minerals, so forth. But today we're going to talk about the sun specifically and UV damage. Um, UV damage can happen rather quickly, so we're going to go over all of the details. There is a post linked in the description box below that is one of my ultimate guides, and it is on sun damage. I encourage you to check that post out and read the whole thing. There's also products linked in that post, and there will be products that I discuss in this video linked in the description box below. So why is gray hair susceptible to yellowing from sun and sun damage because it has no pigment or very little pigment. The more pigment you have in the hair, the more it protects the hair, just like your skin. The more melanin you have in your skin, the less chances you have for sunburning severely um, or it takes longer to sunburn. For instance, for me, because I am so very pale, it takes me all of 15 minutes before I start sunburning. So I am not a sun person. I don't hang out in the sun very much. Um, that is just not something I have ever enjoyed. I had a third degree sunburn when I was a child and I'll tell you, you never forget that pain. You never will forget a burn that bad. And it was from being at a track meet and I had my hair up, my face had sunscreen on, but my neck did not. So I had a blister across the back of my neck. I still have the marking from it. It's a dark band across the back of my neck from that severe sunburn. So having pale skin is the same as having pale hair. You will sunburn easier. And you might wanna just think about it as your hair is sunburning. UV damage is um, something that can happen to any hair color, whether you have pigment or not. Uh, we just happen to get the opportunity to see it because it turns yellow. The reason it turns yellow is that it is believed that there are blue molecules left in your white hair. And when the sun bleaches those blue molecules, it leaves yellow molecules behind. Um, I like to think of it like blue jeans. If you ever bleach a pair of blue jeans, you know that that bleach mark is completely different than the blue surrounding it and you can't repair it, it's permanent. You will never make it look the same again. So that's kind of a good analogy to keep in mind is that, you know, the sun is bleaching your hair just like bleach bleaches blue jeans. Beyond the care of your hair, you need to take care of your scalp. The pigment in your hair helps shade your scalp. It creates a barrier. So once you have no pigment in your hair, your scalp is exposed to the sun as well. One of the number one deadliest melanomas happens on the scalp. So please listen to me when I say protect your scalp. What does sun damage look like on gray hair? Well, yellow. In the blog post below, there is photos of gracious women who shared their sun damaged hair with me and allowed me to share it with you so you can understand what it looks like. It is a gradual yellowing most of the time. It happens over a period of time with repeated exposure. And it's usually the outside layer of the hair. So if you pick up the top layer underneath will not be yellow. It will be this outer layer that is exposed to the sun all the time. Now, again, it does happen gradually over time. If you're somebody that goes outside all the time and you're out in the sun repeatedly, you're gonna end up with sun damage if you don't have something coating your hair to protect it. Um, it can happen quickly depending on how hot it is, how high the UV index is, um, how pale your hair is compared to, you know, if you have darker gray hair, you may not yellow at all. You may not notice it. Um, 
But keep in mind that it is something that can happen over a period of time to where you may not notice it at first, but after a while you'll go, what happened? Why is my hair so yellow? There is a woman in the post below that she contacted me for a consultation and what she had noticed is that she had about six inches of perfectly white hair that was her normal color and her hair is very very long and she was winding it up and wearing it up on top of her head and that's when she noticed that the ends of her hair were very yellow they were a very different color than the hair growing out of her scalp that meant to me that her sun damage had happened within that six inches growth back then so it happened six inches ago basically which turned out to be a year before our conversation and a year before our conversation she had taken over the mowing of her property and was mowing her her lawn and didn't think about it and had not been putting anything on her hair so that's something that might happen to you you might not notice for a year and then all of a sudden you'll go oh what happened here you know because you'll Put your hair up and you'll notice that it's a different color on the ends than it is at the roots. Okay, so what are the protective measures you should take to protect your hair? There are three routes to protecting your hair and your scalp. Um, the first route is putting something in your hair, whether it's shampoo, conditioner, creams, leave-ins, sprays, what have you, that have a specific ingredient in them to filter UV. I say look for products that claim UV protection because if it doesn't claim UV protection, it may not be rated for UV protection, meaning the ingredient might be there, but it might not be enough to actually create protection. The second thing you can do to protect your hair is cover it. So covering it means a hat, a buff, which I have here, a little buff. Um, Whatever you protect it with, the best protection is something that is UV rated. So there are fabrics that are made to protect you from this UV rays. There are certain fabrics that UV rays can penetrate. So this makes sense. Um, you can buy hats that are UV protective. I'll link everything below. The buff that I love is UV protective. And then you can, you know, head for the shade, head for an umbrella and stay in the shade. I prefer being in the shade because I get hot really easily and it's just better for me, my entire body, to be in the shade. So when I am outside, as much as I can, I try to stay in the shade. The third thing you can do is both. You can have all of these protective measures in your hair and you can stay in the shade or stay under a hat or a buff. Um, it's not really a matter of that you have to wear a hat or you have to wear the SPF or UV protective products. You can pick one or the other, but just know that the best protection is to cover your hair completely. Um, obviously that's not possible for everybody. Some people don't like to wear hats. Some people can't wear anything on their head. Um, some of you have chemical sensitivities and don't wanna spray anything on your hair. So you have to choose what's right for you. And if you miss a day, don't panic, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. Your hair will grow back. It will grow out. And there are things you can do to, you know, neutralize the yellow with like purple shampoo and conditioner, which I'll get to in a little bit. An important distinction to make is that UV filters and SPF are two different things. SPF is for skin. It is a barrier, um, like a protective barrier cream or a chemical barrier cream and its job is to literally create a barrier between you and the sun or it absorbs uv rays and disperses them so that they don't damage your skin so that's spf and spf means that it protects you from the sun if you are using uv filters on the other hand the sun's still going through that, right? It's still filtering through. That's why it's called a UV filter. UV filters are slightly different. They can be sprayed on the hair and they don't have to have an SPF rating because they are not protecting your skin from 
sun damage. They're protecting the hair from UV radiation. So it's an important distinction because it's very confusing and there is a product out there by Sunbum and they have two products actually and I'll show you a picture here. So one of those products is UV protection and one of them is SPF protection but it's very difficult to understand that they are two separate products doing two separate jobs and that neither one of them do both jobs. So be really careful when you're buying products that you understand the labeling, understand what it says and what it is protecting. Um, if it has SPF rating on it, it is a medical device, so it has to be rated with a number, SPF 30, 40, whatever. And it has to contain active SPF ingredients. UV filters for hair, on the other hand, are a collection of ingredients. The best UVA, UVB filtering ingredient for hair is called Cinnamidopropyl Trimonium Chloride, or CAT-C for short, which I'm going to continue saying CAT-C because that's a mouthful. Um, and that ingredient is the one that has been studied and scientifically proven to protect hair from UV damage. Um, <clears throat> my number one product that I recommend that contains SPF and UV protection in one product is from Kula. It is Kula Scalp and Hair Mist and it is 30 SPF and contains the cat C ingredient. This can be sprayed right on your scalp. You just take the little nozzle and you spray it right on the scalp and spray wherever you know, you've got scalp exposure and then you can mist it from a distance throughout your hair and that will protect your scalp and your hair from sun damage. It also has a water resistance for up to 80 minutes so you can get in and out of the water which is great. <laughs> My second most recommended product is Scene Blowout Cream or the Curl Cream. They both have UV and heat protection in them. No SPF. But the UV protection in the Scene products comes from Moringa Oliferia and it is a extract from the horseradish tree that protects from UV. My number three product is Weedad Advanced Climate Control Heat and Humidity Gel. It is heat and UV protective. Even if you don't have curly hair, check out the Weedad Heat and Humidity Control products. They have a spray, they have a gel. These are products that you can put in your hair and use in your lineup daily. So for instance, if you get caught outside sitting with a friend, eating lunch or something, you don't have to worry about it. You've already got a little bit of UV protection in your hair. And I think it's great to have a product somewhere in your lineup, shampoo, conditioner, leave-in, gel, whatever, that has UV and heat protection in it for your silver hair. And then you're, you're set, you're good to go. Now that doesn't obviously take care of the SPF issue. One note I want to make is that using SPF, um, like your, I have my SPF uh, skin cream here, it's fine if you want to take this and put it on your scalp, that's fine. It's a SPF. It's not for your hair though. So putting your sunscreen on your hair, it might give some barrier, but it's really not rated to do that job. So find, you know, your UV product like the scene or the Kula and you know just keep it in your bag or keep it in your car whatever works for you <laughs> so speaking of keeping something in your car I carry these buffs with me everywhere I have one in my bag and I have um, one this is the one I take on walks this is UV rated fabric um, my hat that I was wearing earlier was also a UV rated hat and see it's this long tube and this is by buff b-u-f-f -F. and i just roll mine up into 
you know, a band like this real wide. And I put it on like so. I didn't intend to do this, but here we go. I'll just show you. So I put it on like this and I go over my scalp and I go to the edge of my forehead and I pull it back like that so that it's covering all of my head. I put it over the edge of my ears and then I tie my hair up and I usually put it in a clip or a bun. Before I tie it up, I coat it in UV scene blowout cream. And that is how I do our outdoor walks. We do walk in the evenings at sunset, so at least at that point it's not so intense. That's why I feel like I can safely go with just the buff. Um, you know, using hats, scarves, whatever. Even if you don't have UV rated fabric, something over it is better than nothing. How long before UV damage happens? Well, it depends on a few things. Check your weather app for the UV index. The higher the index, the higher the chances that you will experience damage and the faster that damage can occur. The higher the sun is in the sky, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. is your highest rate of UV radiation. So that's when you really want to protect yourself from UVB rays in particular. And just remember that the paler your skin is or the lighter your hair is, the faster the damage will occur. And by fast, I mean five to 10 minutes. The darker your hair is or the darker your skin is, the slower that damage will come on. But everyone is susceptible to sun damage. So be safe with that. If you do get sun damage, don't worry about it. It is permanent, however, um, it will grow off and you can start taking protective measures now to protect your new growth while the old growth grows off and this is when you need purple shampoo and conditioner if the yellow tones bother you. My favorite purple shampoo and conditioner is from Loma. I feel the pigment in that holds really well, especially on low porosity hair. If you have high porosity hair, it might be a little too intense for you or you might like the tone that it gives you but it's my favorite and I'll link it below. Um, I found for me, it worked better than anything else I had tried. Most of them just came right back off, so they served no purpose for me. Like I said, don't worry about it if you damage it. It's not the end of the world, it is just hair. I know it's frustrating, um, but to learn how to protect it is you know, better than not doing anything at all. Um, the other thing you can do if you are out in the sun a lot in the summertime is protect your hair by providing moisture. Moisture barrier will help protect it from any kind of damage, from the sun, from heat, from chlorine. If your hair is dry, it will grab environmental pollutants like chlorine from the pool and it will be more susceptible to being damaged from UV rays. So. I have two points on this. Always use a leave-in conditioner, even if it's just something light. And this is a point you can put a leave-in conditioner. I'll go back to the scene because it's sitting here. You can find a leave-in conditioner that is already UV protective, and then it's just part of your routine. Um, you can use the UV protective gel like the Weed Add products. But another trick in the summertime is to regularly deep condition. When you regularly um, clarify and deep condition your hair, you're protecting it on several levels. When you clarify, you're removing these things like chlorine from the pool and minerals from your water and product buildup. By doing that, you're not allowing those things to become damaged by the sun too. So see, these things that are on your hair can become damaged by sun and heat and they can discolor your hair. So clarifying regularly and deep conditioning regularly will help you tremendously. Deep conditioning is imperative, I think, for silver hair. I think that the more moisture you provide for your hair, the more you will protect it from all sorts of damage because hydrated hair is not going to grab a hold of everything in its path and latch on. Think of it, think of dry hair like Velcro. 
that it is going to stick and adhere to things in the environment. You know, Velcro will pick up lint, it will pick up hair, it will pick up all kinds of things besides sticking to the Velcro. So if you keep your hair moisturized and hydrated, it closes down and it's not grabbing on to everything in the environment. Okay, so that's it for me today. I hope you found this video educational, helpful, and I hope you learned something valuable for keeping your hair its best. Until next time, shine on.